Since their inception, solid state drives have been far and away the fastest storage available when it comes to read write speeds. Now, if you're a bit on the older side, like me, and you use the hard disk drive, then you remember boot times for your PC and load times in games taking absolutely forever. When the transition to SSDs as the main OS drive started, boot times were nearly instantaneous and load times in games improved. Even as we approach 4K texture territory on new games, load times are still pretty good. Let's talk numbers and a little bit of history for a minute. With a typical spinning drive, like a 7200 RPM HDD on a SATA connection, and while while SATA 3 has a max throughput of 6 gigabits per second or around 600 megabytes per second, those transfer speeds are limited to around 140 to 160 megabytes per second, since you're limited to the mechanics in the drive. A 2.5 inch SSD on a SATA 3 connection can sustain speeds up to 550 megabytes per second, and this factors in overhead, but you're basically saturating that connection completely. The move to NVMe SSDs allows for the SSD to communicate directly with the CPU via the PCIe bus, with each lane on a PCIe 3.0 to allow for a one gigabyte per second speed bidirectionally. This means a PCIe 3x4 SSD can reach a throughput of up to four gigabytes per second. That's already eight times faster than a SATA SSD, and that's on PCIe 3.0, which is now two generations old at this point. With PCIe 4.0, you have a two gigabyte per second speed per lane, so a PCIe 4x4 SSD can have up to eight gigabytes of throughput, and a PCIe 5.0 has four gigabytes per second per lane, or up to 16 gigabytes per second for a PCIe 5x4. That is crazy fast. Which is why this new Samsung 9100 Pro SSD is so impressive. Utilizing Samsung's VNAN technology and Presto controller, the 9100 Pro can deliver sequential read speeds up to 14,800 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 13,400 megabytes per second. So remember the theoretical limit of PCIe 5.0 is 16 gigabytes per second, and this is sporting read-write speeds of 14.8 gigabytes per second and 13.4 gigabytes per second, which is double the speed of Samsung's own 990 Pro series of SSDs. If that's not enough context for how fast these SSDs are, here's one more comparison. I found this handy chart showing the data transfer rates on RAM generations. This Samsung 9100 Pro SSD has speeds that are comparable to DDR3 memory. This non-volatile memory is starting to approach speeds of volatile memory, which has some crazy implications on use cases for SSDs in the future, because you're not limited to capacities of volatile memory. The Samsung 9100 Pro has capacities ranging from one terabyte to eight terabytes. There's a lot going on under the hood in this 9100 Pro. With Samsung crediting their five nanometer process of their Presto controller that they do manufacture in-house, as well as firmware optimizations. With a PCIe 5x4 and NVMe 2.0 protocol, you're truly getting the most out of those PCIe Gen 5 M2 slots on your motherboard. The one terabyte drive has a one gigabyte cache. Two terabyte drive has a two gigabyte cache, the four terabyte with four gigabytes of cache and eight terabytes with eight gigabytes of cache. Random read on the one and two terabyte models have 1,850 IOPS and 2,200 IOPS on the four and eight terabyte models. And a random write speed of 2,600 IOPS on all four variants. While all of the speed is impressive, who actually benefits from the bleeding edge of SSD speeds? I mean, sure, video editors can benefit from high-speed drives, but even 8K raw footage does not have a high enough bandwidth to saturate all of that throughput available. Though, those workloads definitely take advantage of the fast random performance. Games with direct storage can benefit greatly, but that list of games is still limited. Now, gaming in general definitely will benefit from the throughput, and if you do want to pair the best of the best, let's say you get a 9950X3D CPU that you bought at Micro Center, then this is the way to go. The biggest use case for this drive is actually with artificial intelligence. As local AI grows, the power needs across the entire system grows. Obviously, you want a GPU with 
tons of VRAM, or several for that matter. If I were building an AI workstation with a Threadripper, four A6000 GPUs, and all of the ECC DDR5 memory that I can get my hands on, then an SSD like the 9100 Pro is what I'd use. Local models are getting massive. Llama 3.1 405B, or 405 billion parameters, is 2.3 terabytes. To load and run a model like that, you need a high capacity SSD and it has to be the fastest SSD that you can get your hands on. I can guarantee that as local AI matures and we see more use cases emerge and implementation standardize, this faster throughput will definitely become a necessity. So when you look at a drive like the 9100 Pro today and see impressive speed, we're only just starting to take advantage of all of that speed. Now, we've talked plenty about the theoretical performance of the Samsung 9100 Pro. Let's put it in the workbench over here and take it for a test drive. So I got the SSD installed and that was actually the easiest part because I have my workbench, everything is exposed here. And I have a 9950X3D CPU, which I paired off with this ASUS ROG Strix X870E-E. I'm actually really happy I'm using this motherboard because it has multiple PCIe 5.0 M2 slots. So I didn't have to remove the SSD I already had with the operating system. There was a secondary slot right above the GPU here. I was able to install it easy, 48 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and a 7900 XTX. Not that any of that really has anything to do with the performance of the SSD, but that's just what we're working with on the bench. So for the benchmark, I'll be using Crystal Disk Mark and it's gonna be pretty straightforward. I have the program already installed and I'm just gonna run it right now. I have the SSD selected. Obviously the SSD is empty. The one that I have here is the two terabyte model. Now here on the box, it says read speed. 14,700 megabytes per second. So, oh, look at that. It's already showing up on the first sequential at the top here. And that's gonna be, uh, I think, one Q, one thread on that first sequential go around. But on the read, we're getting 14,643 megabytes per second. That's wild. And then on the uh, second sequential test here, we have 13,227 on the read speed. This is pretty fast. Like this is actually pretty fast. Even on the random, 6,000 megabytes per second. The random is a pretty important indicator. Obviously that first one there, um, that's gonna be like the top speed that you're ever gonna get, right? The second speed, it's a little bit closer to like real world numbers, but that third speed, that random, that's actually a really good indicator of what you can get in terms of performance, especially you know if I'm video editing and I can expect random read speeds 6,000 megabytes per second, that's awesome. The write speeds are starting to come in, so I'll just let that populate for a minute, and I'm just gonna let this run. All right, there we go, so everything is all done. So our first row, that's gonna be the sequential, that's gonna be the one megabyte, so yeah, eight queues, one thread. So that read speed, 14,643. So we're actually hitting that advertised number, which is Really impressive, that is crazy fast. Write speed, 13,476. And then our sequential on the 128 kilobyte, 32 queues, one thread. And this is from the NVMe SSD uh, setting over here. So 13,227 read, 12,824 on the right. And then obviously our random, four kilobyte, 32 queues, 16 threads, 6,000, 54 megabytes per second on the read and 5,872 on the right. And then right here, it's our four kilobyte, one key, one thread. It's kind of like your minimum threshold in terms of performance, like the absolute bottom. 85.45 megabytes on the read, 221 megabytes on the right. I mean, that's still, even at the absolute bottom, that's kind of faster than a spinning drive. <laughs> that is wild. So now for a comparison, I'm opening up a second window with Crystal Disk Mark and I wanna run a test on the operating system SSD that we're currently running, which is a Gen 4x4, I believe, is what we have in there. I mean, I'm seeing the numbers come up and that definitely lines up. I forget the exact brand that we're using, it's probably an inland, but I wanna compare what a Gen 4 versus what a Gen 5 looks like. All right, there we have it, this one's all done. So this is a Gen 4 drive versus the 9100 Pro Gen 5. 
crazy. Absolutely crazy. I mean, across the board, on the sequential, you're getting double. You're getting double on read and write. On the one megabyte, even on the 128 kilobyte, a little less than double on the read, double on the write. Even on the random, you're performing quite a bit more. 6,054 megabytes per second on the read versus 3,680 on the read, and that's random. 5,800 versus 4,600 on the right, again, random. Wow, that is just absolutely impressive. So I think that bodes really well for the Samsung 9100 Pro. I mean, it's definitely hitting those speeds, which is just absolutely wild. So that about wraps it up for the Samsung 9100 Pro. Remember, you can get this blazingly fast SSD at your local micro center. So if you're planning on building the ultimate gaming rig, a video editing PC, or a beefy workstation, we got you covered. And if you don't have a micro center near you, then be sure to comment hashtag I want a micro center near me.